Hi, I'm Tamanna, again came with a new episode at the same topic, Illusion of Time. What I committed in previous episode, the theory of relativity. But if you're watching my video directly, my request is please see episode 1 and 2 for easy understanding of my third episode. Part 1 and 2 links are given in the description below. Please subscribe, like and share my video. Your support will be my inspiration. Before going to the topic, I want to share one most popular statement of Albert Einstein, which inspired me to study the theory of relativity. That was, if a theory cannot be explained to a child, then the theory is probably worthless. Relativity is a very vast chapter with very complex mathematics, which are, is our base present science and technology. But I tried to explain it in simple way what I understood from my research. Let's start my video, The Theory of Relativity, which is a part of Illusion of Time. The story started. Galileo Galilei, the father of observational astronomy, the great scientist, inventor, and the most intelligent person in the 15th century, the Galileo, who was born in Pisa, Italy, on 15 February 1564. Before Galileo, philosophers and theologians widely believed that the Earth sat at the center of the universe and the whole universe, star, sun, moving around the earth. But Galileo did not believe on that. He thought something different. He told earth is moving around sun, not sun is moving around earth. To demonstrate how a moving earth could be constant and with our everyday experience, Galileo introduced a thought experiment in his 1632 book titled Dialogues concerning the two chief world systems. That was the one side of the story, but the other side was Galileo, who first understand the most fundamental thing of modern physics, or we can say the alphabet of physics, the word reference frame. Let us understand what reference frame is. The first thing to focus on when study motion of an object or person is their position. The word position describes your location, where you are. However, saying that you are here or there is meaningless. You have to use known points or the reference points to help specify your position. In a void or universe, there is no top no bottom, no left, nor no right. So to mention any object in our three dimension system, we re refer the value of three axes, x, y, and z. A object position can describe by these three axes. A frame of reference is nothing but a set of coordinates that can be used to determine position and velocities of object in that frame. Different frames of reference moves relative to each other. Simply I'm standing on the ground. That is my frame of reference. Anything I see, watch or measure will be compared to the reference point of ground. If you are sitting in a car, then the car is now your frame of reference and everything will be measured compared to it. There are two types of frames of reference. Number 1. Inertial frame of reference. Number 2. In Non-inertial frame of reference. Let us know what inertial frame of reference is. A frame of reference that remains at rest or moves with constant velocity with respect to other frames of reference is called inertial frame of reference. That means an inertial frame of reference has a constant velocity. That is, it is moving at a constant speed in a straight line or it is standing still. Newton's law of motion are valid in all inertial frame of reference. Here, 
A body does not change due to external forces. All inertial frames of reference are equivalent for the measurement of physical phenomena. Let us know what is non-inertial frame of reference. A frame of reference is said to be a non-inertial frame of reference when a body not acted upon in an external force is accelerated. In a non-inertial frame of reference, Newton's law of motion are not valid. It also does not have a constant velocity and is accelerating. But how the relativity concept came? Galileo Galilei first described the principle in 1632, and from here the first word relativity discovered. And further it is called Galileo invariance or Galilean relativity. Galileo did a thought experiment called as Galileo's ship thought experiment. Let us know what the experiment was. Imagine Galileo sitting in the hull of a windowless ship, unable to see outside into the sea. His ship speeds up until it's moving at a constant velocity. At this point, being in the ship's hull will feel as though the ship were at rest in a calm harbor upon reaching a constant velocity. Galileo starts conducting simple mechanical experiments. Let's imagine that he is simply dropping a ball from the top of the ship's cabin to the floor, nothing where it lands. If the ship were stationary at the dock, the ball would drop straight to the floor directly beneath, where Galileo were holding it. But what would happen if the ship were moving at a constant velocity? Galileo actually conducted a similar experiment and discovered that the ball would simply fall directly below where it's dropped, just as if the ships were stationary. From Galileo's point of view in the ship's hull, there was no difference between a ship with constant velocity and a stationary one. But differences arise when you consider other reference frames. Let in front of the ship, there is a fish in rest, watching the same incident. The ship passes a stationary relative to the fish at a specific time called T1. Few seconds later, at time T2, the ball hits the floor of the ship as the middle of the ship passes over the fish. From the fish's perspective, the ball not only dropped vertically but also moved horizontally several feet. Similarly, if Galileo had a porthole to look through, he would notice the fish moving relative to the ship. This means that there is no absolute velocity. Velocity measurements will differ depending upon the reference frame in which they are measured. For instance, Galileo's ball had no horizontal velocity from his reference frame in the windowless ship. The fish, however, would see the ball having a horizontal velocity equal to that of the entire ship floating overhead. Neither measurement is correct. Quite simply, it's all relative. Wow, what a brilliant thought experiment to understand the secret of nature. And this experiment also gives the answer of my question that how the coffee can put in a car 100 km speed nearly constant velocity never fall down? Or how a mosquito can fly inside a 150 km speed train nearly equal to a constant velocity? Galileo's understanding of physics going to be most brilliant discovery forever and further it is called as classical relativity. Let us understand classical relativity with some more examples. Suppose we are in a car. Then the person sitting inside the car is not moving or all the object inside the car is in rest with respect to car or, or relative to car. If there will be some change in motion or direction of the car, then we can feel something but in constant speed of the car. Everything inside will be absorbed rest. But what the observers outside the car will observe?
He will observe the car and all the things inside the car is in motion. From this example, we understand what are in rest relative to car, but relative to the road or earth, we are in motion. Because earth is taken as rest, but is the earth in rest? No. Earth is moving around itself at a speed of 1000 miles per hour and moving around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. This thing we can say when our solar system is considered as rest. Is our solar system as rest? No, because our solar system is running at a speed of half million kilometer per hour around our galaxy and our galaxy is also in motion our cluster is in also motion and our supercluster is also in motion maybe our universe is just in motion and our multi-universe is also in motion so we are talking about an object in this universe then question may arise that relative to what this was the fundamental of classical relativity classical relativity tells there is no such motion as absolute motion or absolute rest. Object moves relative to each other. In Illusion of Time Part 4, we will discuss few more examples of classical relativity. And also we will discuss the most interesting and extraordinary theory of 19th century called as Einstein's Theory of Relativity. To see it, please subscribe my channel and click on the bell icon because your support my inspiration